back to Intro to Python Skills for AI, powered by Capital One. At the end of the last episode, we got started on creating our Twitter bot. We made it go and fetch a load of data from Twitter using our requests library, and then we popped it inside Beautiful Soup to go and extract out the data we needed. But when we finished then, all of the data wasn't particularly usable yet, and that is what we're going to be spending this episode doing. We're going to make the data something a little bit more useful. So diving straight back into our code, I think it's time to write our get user tweets function. What this is going to do is it's going to go and get what our get elements function returned and convert it into a list of tweets that we can then go and use throughout our code. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is say elements is equal to, and I want it to be equal to, well, what our get elements function returns. Do you know how to do that? Well, if you said I just use our get elements function, you are entirely correct. And we're going to go and ask for get elements for Twitter handle, because conveniently our get user tweets function is also passed in for Twitter handle. Then I'm going to go and create an empty list and that's going to contain all of our tweets. The reason I'm making this list now is so that we can go and fill it very shortly and we don't have to worry about it not existing or anything. If it's empty and it's there, then at least it's ready to go. Okay. Now I know ultimately I want this function to return the tweets that contained within our elements. Can you think how we might do that? How do we go from having our elements to having a list of tweets? So the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to loop through our elements and for each element that is a valid tweet, I'm going to add it to our list of tweets. And the way I'm going to do this is say for post in elements for text in post.contents. In a second, I'll explain what this is all doing. Don't worry. And I'm going to go and check if the line contains real text. I'm going to say if text string not in empty items, then we're going to say tweets dot append text dot string. But what does this actually do? Well, first of all, we say for every element, we want to loop for all the elements. And then in each element, we want to check for text in each content of the element. And the way Twitter formats it, it means there might be lots of empty elements that we don't really care about. So we say, if it's an empty element, we don't care about it. But you know, if the element isn't empty, as in the contents of the string is not contained within our empty items, variable, which contains none or just blank space and all of that kind of stuff. Well, in that case, we're going to append the text, the text that is inside it, we're going to go and append it. And it's going to be the string because it's easier just to deal with the string here. If this is confusing, don't worry, take a step back. But remember, we are looping inside a loop here. We're first looping through all the HTML elements, and then we're looping through the text inside of them to see if they contain real text. And if they do, we're going to know that is a tweet. And so we're going to append it to our list of tweets, which then when we've looped through all of the elements is returned by our get user tweets function. Okay. Awesome. But we have one more function to create, and this might be a slightly more tricky one. We've got cleans tweet data. We want to clean our tweet data so that it's a bit more useful, but how are we going to do that? We want to remove a load of stuff we don't want, such as links and emojis and all of that sort of stuff. How do I do that in programming? Well, we're going to use a tool called regular expressions or regex, and they are a powerful programming tool, which lets us search for a sequence of characters using a search pattern. And you can then use that search pattern to remove all the data that doesn't match or to use that data elsewhere. In this case, we're going to be getting rid of any data that matches a pattern of an emoji or of a mention or of a URL. Now, disclaimer, regex is confusing. I get confused with regex all the time. 
And don't worry if this slightly blows your mind because it blew mine when I first tried it. So if you are feeling like there's tons of characters and you don't know what they are, feel free to go and Google it. Feel free to check out all the regex guides that are on online. There's also some regex generators you can play around with, but just know if you are confused, you're definitely not alone here. Now, on your screen now is an example of a URL pattern. And what does this actually mean? Well, URL pattern is the name of a variable and RE is the Python regex library. Then we've got R quote, HTTP backslash S plus quotes. Well, what does that mean? Well, R says, hey, this is a regular expression and we're gonna go and search for text that starts with HTTP and then is followed by any length of string, which is what the backslash capital S plus means. Finally, we're gonna say, hey, apply this using re.all to every single thing, including new lines. We then, using this example, can go and replace the contents of URLs with nothing, which is why they're super useful. In this example, we go and use a substitute function to replace any text that matches our search pattern with absolutely nothing. And then the variable text about URL would equal just check out this URL with an exclamation mark with no more URL. Now again, regular expressions are tricky. So we're not gonna write them from scratch today. I'm gonna help you go along and we've actually got some pre-written ones to make our life a little bit extra easy. So if you open the resources.txt file, you'll see Hiding in here is a regular expression which we are gonna go and use. So select it and copy it. We're gonna use it in our code in just a second. When you've copied it, head back over to Twitter scraper function and paste it in. If you did it right, it should look a bit like this. Now, this is great. It's a regex which is gonna match for emojis, but we actually wanna go and add a couple more regexes we're gonna use. Let's first of all do the one we just talked about. We're gonna say URL pattern is equal to re.compile and it's gonna be r, HTTP, remember? And it's gonna be backslash s plus and then quote. This is really easy to typo by the way, so be a bit careful. And then re.all to apply it to everything. So yeah, remember we're matching any text that starts with HTTP and then has any characters after it. I'm also gonna go and make a pattern for mentions. That's what people on Twitter do to go and talk to other people. So we do at their name. And again, it's gonna be a regex that we're gonna go and compile using a string. And we're gonna look for things that start with at. And then after that, any other characters. and it's gonna be, oh, careful not to typo it, applied to everything, so re.all. See, regexes are a bit finicky, so be a bit careful when you're copying them. Okay, so we've got our regexes, but we now need to run them on our code, or not on our code, but more so on our list of tweets. Well, can you think how are we gonna go and run these on every single tweet? Well, if you're looking get user tweets, we used a loop, remember? And we're gonna do the same thing here. In fact, I'm gonna do something very similar. I'm gonna create a empty list called cleaned tweets. And then I'm gonna return cleaned tweets. And then inside here, we need to work out how we turn this from just an empty list into what we need. So first of all, let's loop through tweets. So say for tweet, in tweets. And, hmm, well, we wanna first of all use our emoji one, our emoji pattern to remove all of the different emojis in our tweet. So I'm gonna say, hey, our text without emoji is equal to, well, we're gonna use our emoji pattern and we're gonna substitute which is a very difficult to spell word. We're gonna substitute, wait, we don't need to say substitute though, do we? Because we say sub. It's important that we get the name of our functions correct. We, we wanna substitute an empty string for any matches and we wanna apply this to 
everything. Well, okay. Can you see if you can do the same thing, but go and remove URLs from all the tweets? Remember, we have our URL pattern that we can use. Well, pretty obvious thing the first thing we're gonna say is text or at URL. And we're gonna use our URL pattern and we're gonna substitute it with, you know, just, just nothing, just like last time. Well, hang on, hang on. We're programming, but it looks like we made a typo here. We didn't wanna do re dot all here, did we? We did re dot all here. We're not actually applying this to our tweet. This is a typo and if we run our code, it wouldn't work. This is why it's really important to make sure you're not making typos in your code. But if you do, make sure you are catching them. Instead, here, we wanna detect the, fun the tweet that we're currently in, in our loop. Well, surely here that means we wanna say, hey, we wanna apply this pattern to our tweet as well. But no, think, if we do that, we're applying it to the tweet which we have already you know, not removed our emoji from because that's stored in text about emoji. It's just the original tweet. So instead, we're gonna apply it to text without emoji. Keep an eye out for typos like that. It's actually really easy to do. In fact, here I said mention patterns, not mention pattern. Let's go and get rid of that S. It's really easy to make that mistake though. Programming, half the time your problems are caused by typos. Okay, well finally, we wanna go and apply our mentions pattern. But I'm not actually gonna go and create a new variable for that. Instead, I'm just gonna say cleaned tweets dot append. So add to clean tweets, the result of us running mentions pattern dot sub. And again, we're gonna replace it with nothing. And it's gonna be text without URL. And again, be careful of typos. And that is it. So it means that when we loop through all of these tweets, we're first of all gonna remove the emojis, then we're gonna remove the URLs, and finally, we're gonna go and remove the mentions, and then append them to our list of tweets. And finally, we're gonna go and respond, return those tweets. Well, we just created a function that removes all of these necessary like characters from our tweets now. So I think we're actually pretty much ready to go, but before we do that, I just wanna give you a quick look into some of the other files which make our application work. So first up we have main.py. This on lines 17 to 21, they text when a user enters a question to the web page, it goes and saves it into a variable named question and it saves the Twitter handle of the person they wanna to talk to. Then on lines 23 to 27, we've got a try block. So we're gonna say, hey, we're gonna try and run the code in this block. And great, if it works, so in that case, you know, if we can get a valid response, great. If we can't, however, we're gonna go, instead of sending the results for user of our response, cause there is none, then we're gonna say, except if there's an error, just say, hey, the bot's answer is, hey, I couldn't process that, try again, please. And that way we don't have the entire application crash. We're very carefully making sure we do tell the user what, that something went wrong without it actually causing issues. So with that, let's give our app a try. I'm gonna say I wanna chat with at they call me Swift. He's the big scary boss guy here at Major League Hacking, but he's pretty nice really. And I'm gonna say my message. I'm just gonna say hey to him and I'm gonna send my message. And here we go. It's one of Swift's tweets responding to me. Isn't that awesome? Now, we are gonna go and make our bot in a future episode do something a little bit more useful. In fact, we're gonna implement some AI so that our app actually responds to our message rather than just returning a random tweets. But before we dive into that, I would recommend taking this quiz to go and recap what we have just learned. And if you do wanna take a break from here, I would recommend going and having a look at the code we have written, making sure you do understand it and making sure you do really know what is going on. You can also check out codecademy.com for some free Python lessons and keep watching the series because we have even more coming up. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you then.